Hi there, it is Gülşen. I hope you are having a great day today. Today I am going to talk about three types of energy isolation widely used in oil and gas industry. Energy isolation is a critical and extremely important process for safety of plant operations. It is disconnection of equipment from all energy sources in order to allow some intervention works to be conducted on it. There were several industrial examples in history where fatal or serious injury accidents occurred as a result of inadequate isolation practices or improper implementation of procedures. One of which was the worst offshore disaster, Piper Aqua accident, where one of the root causes was poor isolation management. These accidents, although were very tragic, they have also introduced necessary changes to industrial practices and improved the existing safety policies and procedures to more robust and reliable ones. So, energy isolation itself is a broad term, which covers process, electrical, instrumentation isolations and other equipment-specific isolations as well. But my presentation will be limited to process isolation only, and today I am going to explain three types of it. With the order of criticality, it starts with positive isolation, the method where hazardous source is fully and positively segregated from a process. This method is applied if there is zero tolerance for leakage to the system, such as some confined space entries, to isolate a train for overhaul or inspection, for hazardous services and operations when fluids are at or above their auto-ignition temperature. So it can be achieved by either pipework removal and blind flange installation, or insertion of a spade, or swinging of spectacle plate. As can be seen, there is 100% segregation from the system and it is the most reliable, most secure option and you basically rely on engineering controls rather than administrative controls. Here, tightening and leak testing is also a mandatory requirement, which is a part of proper isolation implementation, the important requirement which was missed in the Piper Alpha platform. So in the pipe rifle, when the blind flange plate was used for isolation, the assembly was not fully tightened, and as a result of poor handover between the shifts, the equipment under maintenance was started accidentally, and the condensate leaked through the flange and exploded in processing area. The next most secure type of process isolation is double block and bleed isolation which is the highest possible level of segregation used when positive isolation cannot be implemented or not practicable. It is also called high integrity valve isolation, where we close two block valves in series and we have one bleed point in between. This is because although we use on-off valves for this type of isolation, we know that all valves have an acceptable amount of leakage rates through the valve discs, which is not possible to avoid completely. That's why we have control in place to define monitoring intervals based on isolation criticality, valve type and the condition, and bleed the liquid buildup as required. The double block and bleed type isolation can also be implemented by a single valve which has a double seal in a single body with a bleed point between the seals, an integral part of the valve body so it can provide the same function. The third and the least secure type of isolation is single valve isolation, which does not have a bleed point and it can be achieved by just simply closing a single block valve and it is used for very low pressure applications and non-hazardous services. Here, classification of either as hazardous or non-hazardous is very important, as in history, some accidents happened as contamination of service lines with process fluid was overlooked, the line was mistakenly considered as non-hazardous and implementation of single valve isolation led to an accident. It should also be noted that not all valves are suitable for use in an isolation process because of their design. 
For example, let's look at design of control valves such as a globe valve, a risk of malfunction or accidental opening as a result of pressure changes makes it unreliable for such a critical duty. The same thing applies to a check valve with addition of physical impossibility to implement isolation with it. So that's it. This is the end of my presentation about types of energy isolation. I hope you liked it and learned something new. Please feel free to write your comments and do not hesitate to ask questions if you have any. And please keep learning and sharing and have a nice day.